Hi, and welcome back to how to write a platformer game in Java. In this video, we're going to animate uh, the player. So let me show you what this will look like. So here it is. We're going to our, our player is finally animated. If I walk right, there's a he walks. If I walk left, if I jump, there's a different jump image there. So that's basically uh, what we want to do today. Okay. All right, so here's the code that we had last time, and we want to add to it. Uh, so we're going to create a new class uh, called the player class. So again, uh, the last video, few videos, we've been talking about the animate sprite class. This is the class that we, uh, the base class, that we uh, from which we extend and make everything animated. For example, the coin class, we saw can, can make the coin animate. The enemy class also extend animate sprite that makes the enemy, the spider, be animated. So now we're going to do the player class. Uh, this one is a little bit more complicated than the other ones. Um, so first of all, the animated sprite class has current images. So that's the, the one that we, this is the one that's going to point to uh, whichever state we're in. Move left, move right, stand neutral, etc. Uh, and then um, and then we have uh, these uh, method, uh, update animation, and select direction, select current images, and advance to next image. Uh, so all those methods we saw in the last video, uh, now in the player class though, we need more images than these. And the point here is that whenever you create a new class, depends on what image you have, you might extend the this class by adding more different array for different images. Uh, and maybe you might have less images and you might not need some of these array. Um, and so so in the player class, we're going to have a stand left uh, array, stand right, jump left, and jump right. So we're going to add a few more uh, array on top of the of the other rays that we we have, uh, and I, for example, I actually don't have any stand neutral images, so so I'm not going to use that one. But I have some move left, move right. I have some jumping images. Uh, in fact, let me kind of show you here what I have. Um, so so we're going to look at the images and then see how we can uh, customize our player class to match the images. So I have uh, jump left, jump right, stand left, stand right, walk left. Couple of images for walking, walk right, a couple of images. And these images, uh, I actually just, uh, so if I have a walk left, I should use preview to, uh, so for example, here if I open with a Mac preview, you can do this with the, with the window also, but um, there's an option here to, for example, I think, let's see, if I can flip horizontal, then help me flip it so that I can have a walk left and then a walk right. Um, so, so once you have some images, you can generate. Um, the symmetry version of it. Okay, so the player class, uh, I'm going to add a new variable, the number of lives, right? Because the uh, player will have the number of lives. I'll add a couple boolean. One of them is called on platform. It tells you whether the player is on a platform or not. Uh, that will help you uh, pick what image to select. It has an in place variable. This will tell you whether a player is not moving. If a player is standing still, he's in place. Um, and then the usual constructor takes an, uh, an image, a scale, to kind of initialize the image in the scale. Uh, calling super, initializing three lives. Uh, by default, we're going to face right. That's the direction that we're going to start out the game. Uh, um, and so, and then uh, in place is true. Initially, we're gonna, it's going to be true. In fact, I think I want this to be true also. Um, so on platform is true. We're going to put that at the on the platform and then Okay, so here are the images. Um, so again, I only have one stand left image, so I'm going to create an, an array of one object, uh, and then initialize that by loading the image as uh, player stand left. Same thing with stand right, and then jump jump images. I have, um, yeah, I only have one jump image, so I, this array has only one object, and then uh, I load that, and then jump right is also one image. Player jump right. Move left, I have two images, so here's an array of two images. Uh, walk left one and walk left two. Same thing with move right, two images, walk right one, walk right two. And then um, by default, my current, current images is going to point to the stand right, because uh, that's the, the default. So that's the constructor for this class. Um, and then I want to override some method. So, so again, uh, this player class is, is uh, extending animated sprite, and so I'm not going to override this. This one is going to be the same because uh, if I have an array of images, I just I just cycle through them. So this one is going to be the same. But I'm going to need to change the logic for uh, for these 
to fit my class. So I need to override that. So this is part of inheritance where you you might reuse uh, some class or you might override it. You might do a bit of both. So we're gonna uh, override uh, override this here. Okay. So let's look at the player class. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do with the update animation is um, I need to specify. I need to specify the the state that uh that my player is in, and so for example, uh, I need to specify whether I'm out on a platform or in place or not. So I need to initialize those. So before I can update my animation, I need to know am I on a platform. So I'm gonna initialize on platform. Well, there's a method we wrote over here called uh, is on platform. We wrote this uh, a few videos ago. So this method will tell you whether uh, a sprite is on a platform. It needs a, a sprite and an array list of platforms and to tell you whether the sprite is on the platform. Again, I, I, we might have many sprites so we might uh, can use this method for a different sprite. And so I'm going to call this and this takes two parameters. It takes a, a sprite because we are in the player class, right? I, I need to send over this uh, player object so I'm going to use the this keyword so that's going to be I'm going to send over this object, and then uh, I need to send over the uh, the walls. And again, these variables are global variables here, so I need to send over the platforms. So here I can put platforms here. So again, this method is in the kind of the main driver uh, uh, draw and setup, so we can call it directly. It's a it's a global method. And then I also need to know whether I am in place. In place means that my I'm not moving in the x direction, and I'm not moving in the y direction. I'm just standing still. So a change direction, change y, are both zero. And then you are in place. And then that's basically it. Uh, I so that will help me figure out the state of my object. And then now I can do the same thing I did with the, the this update animation, namely um, select direction, select current images. So all this is the same. So I want to reuse this code. So again, inheritance. How do I reuse that code? I say super dot update animation. So I can call that method. I can reuse the code that I wrote for uh, animated sprite class. So there's my um, update animation. Now I, uh, I need to override the uh, s select direction. Okay, so why do I need to override this? So the current version of select direction says that if I'm moving right, I should be facing right. If I'm moving left, I should be facing left. If I'm not moving, I should be neutral facing. But I don't have any neutral images, so I, d I don't need this direction because I don't have any images for them. So I'm just gonna. Again, this is a. Uh, I'm just going to override this by not including that, so so I don't have this this case. So that's it. So that's the the overriding of that. Is that again? We need to just kind of override these methods to fit our images. So that's kind of the point of of this. Okay. So that's the select direction. Finally, select current images. So again, the the one from here is if I'm facing right, I choose move right. If I'm facing left, choose move left. So that's just the basic um, anime sprite. When we did the coins and the spider, that that might work, but we need to modify it to the player. Um, and so the way we're going to do this here is that uh, we need to look at a couple of things. Uh, so first of all, we need to look at uh, the, the the facing direction. Uh, so for example, if uh, if direction is equal to uh, right facing. Okay, so if I say I'm right facing, well, I'm gonna see if am I in place. So if I'm facing right and I'm in place, then I want to select the the stand right image. So if this is the case. So again, if I'm facing right and I'm in place, then I want my current images to point to the stand right. So I'm not um, I'm not moving. I'm not jumping. So that's one case. Now again, I'm still stand facing right. Else, if if I'm not on a platform, so if I'm, I'm standing right, but I'm not on a platform, that means that I uh, I want my current images to be uh, jump right, right, jump right. Again, so I'm I'm facing right. I'm not in place, and I'm not on a platform. 
so I must be jumping so jump right and then else so that means that uh, so if I'm not in place and I'm not standing right I'm not uh, jumping right then I must be moving right so current images is now move right so that is that's the logic for uh, the, the right and it'll be the same thing for for left so I'm gonna copy and paste this here so else if direction is uh, left facing if I'm left facing and I'm in place then I want to stand left and then if I'm not on a platform I must be jumping left and if I'm none of them I must be moving left so that's the new um, logic for uh, selecting current images so again uh, you always override the, the, this method if your images is different than what I have uh, and so all this is that's why we we write an, uh, a base class anime sprite and then we just extend it and then adjust it to uh, be flexible with it by adjusting uh, I think that should do it let's go back here and see if we can make this work so okay so I have and now I want to change this to before it was a sprite but now it's a player and I'm going to add in a, a, an image uh, p image p for the player because I need to call the constructor so here is a so I load the image p which is the player dot image and then now I, I just can say player is new player I need to send over the image and a scaling 0 0.8 so I'm calling this constructor takes an image and a scale uh, and then I need to maybe uh, position it player dot send um, maybe um, let's say set bottom to be uh, ground uh, level so notice I'm, I'm uh, there's a ground level here we had these uh, variables earlier the width and the height of the screen the ground level is basically the, the bottom of the screen minus the, the size of the sprite and so I want to set the bottom of the player be at the ground level and I'll make the center X to be say 100 so that will initialize my player and set it the position of it um, okay and then I need to also display my my player but now I also need to animate it player dot update animation to animate my player um, I think that's basically it let's run it and see if this will work there it is walk left walk right Right. There it is. Yeah, so this is basically the end. Um, well, th there's gonna be one more video. The next video, we're gonna, for example, uh, we don't ha we haven't resolved any collision uh, with the spider, right? We haven't. We need to have the lives. We need to also, for example, if I fall down the cliff, it's just falling forever, right? So we need to resolve some of that problem. Maybe add a, a reset screen. If I win the game, I can restart the game. All these little things like that, but. That's basically it. Congratulations. We basically cover basically everything in a typical platformer game. Um, okay, so we finished up in the next video. Thanks for watching.